What is going on, everybody? This is Justin Proper here. And today I'm going to be doing something that I haven't done in a very long time. Upload a video. And I figured since it is Friday the 13th, I think it is very fitting to rank the series that I have enjoyed very much since I was a kid. I've always uh, really had a fun time with the Friday the 13th films, whether they were good, whether they were bad, or they were just fun to watch. It's always been a big part of my life, and it really was a gateway into horror films as a whole. I started watching Nightmare on Elm Street, Halloween, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I got into, you know, Hitchcock films because of it, uh, the Scream franchise. You know, it really was a gateway into this wonderful world of horror. And I just wanted to share my thoughts on the films with you guys today since it is Friday the 13th. And if you end up liking this video, please leave a comment down below, like, share, and subscribe for more of them. Because if you guys think that I did a good job on this and you want to see more rankings or more horror-related stuff on the channel, just let me know in the comments below. All right, let's get started with number 12, Jason Goes to Hell, The Final Friday. I really don't think there's any way to describe this other than I just hated this movie. I hated everything about it. I hated the disgusting nature of just completely <laughs> putting in all the horrible things about Friday the 13th, all the cheesiness, all the terrible characters, all the awful writing, and it's, they try to do forced backstory, and it's just, it do, none of it works. None of it works at all. Super zombie powers are transferred from, like, his still-beating heart to anybody who gets their hands on it. It's just, it's too weird for me. I, I don't like it. Uh, it is hot garbage and it is the worst of the franchise the one cool thing about the film is at the very end freddy krueger sticks his glove out and takes jason's mask underground and that was sort of a sort of a tease for freddy versus jason however that didn't come until about a decade later but before we got that we got this classic number 11 jason x jason x has really a one thing going for it it's not Jason Goes to Hell. It's still awful, still terrible writing, wacky, it's ridiculous. This series has gone so off the rails that it's already this messy. It just felt very gimmicky, like, okay, what are we, what are we gonna do with Jason? Um, we're gonna have him fight Carrie, then we're gonna have him go to New York, but not really New York. And now uh, we're gonna have him go to hell. Uh, what's the next step? Oh. Uh, space, just the heck with it. You just, whatever, throw them in space. Why not? I at least respect the franchise for just not caring, but also I hate that it doesn't care. It's, it's just ridiculous. That's why I don't take at least those few movies I don't take seriously at all. Yeah, there's one good kill, but other than that, it, it just... It's a deplorable film. It's, it's not good at all. And I already mentioned it just a second ago, but number 10 is going to be Friday the 13th, Part 8, Jason Takes Manhattan. This movie is just blatant false advertisement. Everybody and their mother who has ranked the Friday the 13th films, they have expressed that it is just Jason Takes a Boat Ride to Manhattan, and that is absolutely true. And on top of that, nobody has mentioned how just horribly ugly the boat is. I know it's like you're supposed to be crucial for high schoolers, but what kind of school ever does this? This It's ridiculous that they would be on this boat to begin with. It's even more ridiculous that this Crystal Lake somehow leads to uh, <laughs> any rivers connecting to New York City. I know it's like in New Jersey. Maybe it's possible. I don't know. I'm not very familiar with geography, and I don't care enough about this stupid movie to go into research and finding out if this is even plausible that crystal lake leads to the ocean i i'm not buying it there's only two reasons why this film is better than the previous films and it's because it gave me two good laughs one is where jason is walking um, you know, along the streets of times square one of the few shots of new york city in the movie and he kicks over a boom box and all of these like skinheads are like looking at him and trying to size him up. And all he does is take off his mask and then they just freak out and run away. I thought that was funny. And then the other part was when this guy is boxing him on top of a roof. This guy is just beating the crap out of him and then he wears himself out. And then in one good punch, 
he decapitates the guy. And I thought that was absolutely hilarious. So that is the reason, those are the reasons why it is not at the bottom. And number nine, this is actually going to surprise some people. Friday the 13th, part three. I know this movie is beloved by a lot of fans. A lot of people really like it. They enjoy the cheesiness of uh, the 3D effects. They love how one of the best things about this film is Jason gets his iconic hockey mask. It, pretty much every big fan knows that, but a lot of casual fans will just you know, watch the sequels, be familiar with that, not be familiar with the, the previous few movies. They just see the films with Jason, the hockey mask, and they think that that's pretty much what he looks like the entire time. Uh, that's not the case at all. Uh, but here, here's the thing about this movie in particular. While it does give us that iconic mask, just look at the actual plot. It's it, it's really hollow. It's just a bunch of people going into a cabin and then they get killed on the same weekend as people did in part two. At least part two, there was some stuff going on that was interesting. In, in this film, the characters were boring. Uh, I just didn't really care about any of the storyline, if there even was any. It really was just a, a cheap 3D film. And honestly, like I get it, the 3D gimmick works for people, but the effects <laughs> that came out of the 80s, at least with this particular film, they've aged so horribly in 2D. It just doesn't work for me. And there's one death in particular where the like an eye goes out into the screen and if you look at it in 2d and you just pause it just like wow it this looks very fake this is this looks horrible and also that character is supposed to be dating this young girl but he looks like he's like 20 years older so it's also really creepy I, not the creepiest part of the film i guess but and also that's terrible terrible replication of the ending of part one with part three instead of little Jason it's like a zombie Pamela Voorhees and I'm just like no I'm not buying this 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 is stupid o overall this this movie is very very highly overrated in every single possible way of the four really good ones parts one through four this is the weakest part I would rather skip this one every single time because part four actually just does a whole recap and you already kind of know what happens and you don't really need to watch it. You don't need to waste your time with it. And number eight, we have Friday the 13th, part seven, The New Blood. While I was binge watching this series, this honestly was the first Friday the 13th film where I actually felt bored. Like part three was gimmicky and stupid and I kind of, you know, had some joy in poking fun at it. But part seven, uh, Really, really, I could care less about anybody, and I just wanted them to die already. I mean, I know a lot of people like the whole Carrie versus Jason aspect, and if they and if this were a different movie, I'd be a lot more forgiving. Uh, but as a Friday the 13th film, I thought it was just kind of silly. I mean, the story is more well done, which is why it's above part three, but I just didn't particularly care for it at this point. I was getting I was getting fatigued with Friday the 13th, you know, going from part one, then we basically have a big climax in part four and part five, it's its own weird thing. Jason lives is whatever. Then we get to this film. It's like, okay, okay. All right. Where, where are we going with this? Where, what, what, what ridiculous, it was basically like, it's the first movie where it was like, okay, what ridiculous thing can we possibly do to make this franchise even more ridiculous? Let's, what, what what kind of stupid thing that we can do that's just so out there that people are just going to eat it up uh, or whatever? I, I I don't know why this movie was made, like, honestly. It, it's just, you know, another Friday the 13th film, basically, and it's just the same old kind of stuff. Uh, the only difference is the MPAA took a chainsaw to it and just... Or put it in a wood, <laughs> wood chipper, basically, because the kills could have been a lot a lot better and a lot more intense but instead mom and dad had to come ruin your fun by saying oh no can't have that can't have that mm -mm -mm. no okay yeah thanks asshole but overall not not a highlight of the series and then number seven we have freddy versus jason what bothers me i guess about this film is that it has so much potential uh, yet it is so underwhelming. The hype for this, the marketing, you know, the fact that you had Freddy Krueger and uh, Robert England as Freddy Krueger and Jason Voorhees in this like WWE 
type of event that they would scale in and Freddy Krueger's like talking smack about Jason. I mean, it's that when we get to that part of the movie at the end, that's fun. Everything with Robert England is kind of fun um, to a certain extent. But I do think the movie spends way too much time on the protagonists, the, like the teenagers, these heroes, which, by the way, let's be real. Nobody paid to see these people. We paid to see them get killed. Yes, but the movie wastes so much time on them trying to make us interested in the story that they're trying to give as if everybody who came to see this movie was an idiot and had never seen Friday the 13th or Nightmare on Elm Street film, which by the way, if that's what you're going to do, you're doing yourself a huge disservice by watching this one first. And on top of that, they didn't even give those characters any personalities or even have them be I don't know, likable. On top of that, I don't think this was a fair fight at all. This was clearly, Jason gets all of the kills except for one, and he kicks the shit out of Freddy at the end. They did my boy Freddy dirty in this film, but in regards to Jason, they made him look like a badass. Well, Freddy looked pretty pathetic, not even getting just one kill, really. He just got one. That's, that's, that's just sad, and he's losing his powers. He's weak. All right, whatever, but like, if he doesn't massacre anybody, then it's not a fair fight at all and jason kicks his ass so this movie could have easily been the best in the series if they actually gave a shit what could have been better is uh maybe have some of the surviving characters and cast from the other movies come back and those are your characters and don't throw them into this plot but the plot because the plot's just so ridiculous but create a different story around it and then you have characters that you actually are familiar with that you like and you also are liking Freddy versus Jason and how they're going at it. And you actually care about people who die. So this could have had a lot of great potential to bring both franchises to, you know, a, a great grandiose finale and a celebration. Uh, but they didn't do that at all. And it just kind of falls flat. And number six, we have Friday the 13th Part 5, A New Beginning, which is another controversial take because so many people have this at the bottom. And for a good reason. The killer isn't Jason. Now, the killer isn't Jason in Friday the 13th Part 1. However, we were kind of expecting, uh, after the final chapter, yeah, Jason dies. But then we were kind of led to believe that Jason comes back. But that's not the case. What really was the case was this, there is a whodunit aspect that isn't very clear. Before the reveal that this is a Jason, we're kind of led to believe that this absolutely is Jason. So there really is no room for a whodunit. And also, the killer was only in the beginning. And then we find out that was his son that got killed by this guy over a chocolate bar. I'm not making that up, by the way. And it's just kind of, it's just so silly to me that <laughs> that, that that whole plot line existed. I, I am aware of that. However, I found the deaths were a lot more elaborate they, the MPAA didn't have their dirty little hands all over this quite yet. And if I just take my mind off of the idea that this isn't Jason, you know, it's actually, it's actually not bad. Yeah, a lot of pointless bodies, and that's basically it. Um, I still had a good time of it. Although I will say, that Tommy Jarvis in this film, he's basically a mute, which if they learned anything from... Halloween 5 is that you don't make your returning character a mute because it, it just doesn't work. But honestly, as it is, I enjoy it more than the other films that I listed before. Now moving on to number five, the OG Friday the 13th from 1980. Now this film, it, it's kind of hard to rank with all the other films because this is the only one that kind of stands out as its own sort of murder mystery whodunit aspect and have has established this lore these, these interesting uh, backstories. I will say that this movie is also quite overrated, but in comparison to some of the other films in the series, this is quite good. I genuinely enjoyed a lot of the performances in the film. I felt like it was really cool. It was really cool to see Kevin Bacon and having probably one of the coolest deaths in the entire franchise. I mean, that's that's some high honor right there. The special effects by Tom Zavini were very well done. The performance of 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 uh, and the performance of Petsy. 
And the performance of Betsy Palmer as Pamela Voorhees really, really sold the movie. That That's really what made this movie work. If you had somebody else in there, yeah, I probably would have written this off as a cheesy, dumb slasher. But here we are with... Uh, with Betsy Palmer and considering the fact that she only did this movie so she could buy herself a new car and the fact that oh god damn it and the fact that she didn't just phone in a performance she actually gave it her all and actually tried to do something great it, it says a lot about Betsy Palmer as an actress and her integrity yeah doing it for a, a car is not exactly not exactly the greatest thing to do but the point is she didn't hold back on her performance she still gave it her all and did the best that she could with what she was given and i don't think enough praise can be given to her she did an excellent job and is part of the reason why this movie really holds up along with the great score and even though it was done as a ripoff of halloween that's exactly what it was supposed to be this is the one that I've watched probably the most out of all of them. Uh, the one that I have the most fondest memories of. Uh, however, there are other films in this series that I enjoyed a lot more. And starting with number four, Friday the 13th, part six, Jason Lives. Now, when I first watched all of these movies, I kind of wrote off Jason Lives as like, oh, whatever. Like, I could skip it. Here's, th here's the thing. When Jason is just walking as a zombie, he is so boring and I just despise this. I don't like zombie Jason. He's not scary. It takes him for, he has to cheat and teleport in order to get to you. And that's not scary to me. That's cheesy and supernatural. And the supernatural stuff, I'm not a big fan of when it comes to things that are established in more realistic senses, uh, you know, or grounded in some sort of reality. But when I watched it later on, I kind of realized what exactly it was going for it was not it was sort of the beginning of the end in a way of, of taking jason seriously and becoming more of a cartoon but when done in this way when it's so meta to the point where i just i'm just like okay okay this this has to be a joke right and the fact that that it is kind of makes it a little bit more enjoyable to watch this is where the series got very commercialized with uh let's <laughs> With all of the, the craziness, I mean, I know because the last film was a disappointment because there was no Jason, but this one just embraces Jason and the iconic mask and the fact that you know that it is Jason makes the movie more exciting. He's back. The Man Behind the Mask is a really good song and I really enjoy it. I like the James Bond opening. I like, uh, I even like the uh, graveyard nigger just looking at the camera and the transitions <laughs> like, uh like with uh, the kids at the, the camp. They actually have kids at Camp Crystal Lake. Uh, who, my gosh, who would have thought? And Tom Matthews is Tommy Jarvis. Uh, he did a very respectable job. I think this movie does get a lot of unnecessary hate. It's not all undeserved because it is a goofy movie. I have a lot of laughs in it. I, I have more fun with it. I'm not scared by it. I just have fun with it because that's what these movies are. I think Jason Lives really in, it just sort of made itself made the franchise of reputation of just being a, a good time at the movies not taking too many things seriously and just enjoying some popcorn enjoying some brutal killings uh some sex scenes and just having a laugh maybe getting a few jump scares in but overall having a good time and i think this film perfectly sums up the slasher franchise as it has been sort of I guess parodied, uh, you know, if that makes any sense, it just, it just maintains that spirit of fun. And I appreciate that. And at number three, we have Friday the 13th part two. Now this was the first Friday the 13th film I had ever seen. I found the tone of it very different from part one. It was similar, but it was more in a, it was in a more darker, almost a more mature a way like the filmmakers had grown a bit from the first film and were finally starting to present new ideas, presenting Jason as the killer, you know, and having all that backstory and the speculation of it all between the characters. And by the way, the characters were fun to watch. They were actually quite enjoyable. And you have one of the best final girls, I think, in almost any franchise 
uh, Ginny. Ginny is a badass. I love her. Um, yeah, she pissed herself. People rack on that a lot, but put yourself in her shoes and see what you do. And of course, uh, who can forget some of the most memorable kills in the franchise? I mean, that spear going through both of those teenagers upstairs, that was that was quite uh oof. That that just that even though it wasn't shown too much, it was still ugh, you, you felt it there, which is a really big strength of the film. And I love how the kid in the wheelchair got a machete to the face. Not because a kid in the wheelchair is dying, but because it shows that Jason does not hold back. He does not care who you are. He will kill you. That moment really solidified Jason as a true monster. And number two, oof, this, was a, this was a really tough one uh, to rank. Uh, number one and number two. But ultimately, I went with Friday the 13th, the, the remake in 2009. I remember seeing this one on opening day in a packed theater with a bunch of college age kids and fans of the series. And I got to tell you, it was one of the most fun movie going experiences I've ever had. You know, in some screenings where a manager will come out and, you know, give a, a viewer discretion is advised sort of announcement. One of the managers entered the theater before the film started and they said, this movie has intense violence, strong sexual content, drug use, and nudity. And the whole crowd just cheered and applauded. Yay! And it was just a fun time. Everyone was digging it. Uh, they were getting into it. They were getting spooked. They were vocal about how they felt about the film. There was a lot of big laughs, like howling laughing. And it was just an overall good time. Everyone was having fun, and it's the kind of movie-going experience that I love having. But about the movie itself, first off, that first 20 minutes, even people who don't like this film love those first 20 minutes. Like, if they, they even said if that was the whole film, they would be satisfied, and you would be correct. It was a great opening. It was intense. It was scary. I was afraid of Jason again. Like I had never been afraid of Jason since like part four, but then having him come back here and just being so intense, he's running again. I like how they brought in aspects of some of the other films. Uh, I love the fact that there is a, an actual plot. Like uh, this guy's trying to find his sister that was kidnapped at the beginning. And that leads to, you know, him meeting up with a bunch of kids who are going to a cabin, classic Friday the 13th. People die, they get killed in comedic ways, in intense ways, and it's just, it's so much fun. It's overall just, I had such a great time rewatching this because after sitting through <laughs> Friday the 13th Part 7 and having to sit through that, Jason takes Manhattan, Jason goes to hell, Jason X, Freddy versus Jason. Then we finally get to this film. I'm like, oh, it just, it was so refreshing to see it going back to basics that I just, I, I think I have to put this movie higher than almost any of them. You know, not just by comparison, but because I felt like the spirit of Friday the 13th, the true spirit had returned. Not everyone's going to agree with it, but that's just how I feel. Like it just, it gets back to what it's supposed to be. And finally at number one, we have Friday the 13th, the final chapter. This uh, by far is the best film this series has to offer. It has everything that you want. Uh, it has great kills. It has cool characters. It's scary. And I understand that Friday the 13th films don't exactly have a great reputation for amazing storylines, character development, or plots, or even continuity, which is all over the place. But here we actually have some decent character moments, uh, especially between Tommy Jarvis, who is played by Corey Feldman. And as you know, he became a huge 80s and 90s heartthrob, and he was on a lot of great films afterwards. This was right before The Goonies, so this is right before he really took off. So uh, they really nailed uh, the casting with Corey Feldman. The actor who plays Jason, Ted White, he recently, uh, he had passed away about a, you know, a few months ago. Uh, he is by far my favorite Jason and the way he moves and the way that he just goes after you and just everything about his performance and the way he moves his body around is just mesmerizing. It is 
by far the best portrayal of Jason in the series. And I must say, the, the cast here is by far among the best ensembles of the entire franchise. Like I mentioned, Corey Feldman it plays Tommy Jarvis. His sister Trish is very well cast. I like uh, Rob, the hitchhiker, uh, who's trying to hunt down Jason in revenge for killing his sister. Now, how did he find out about his sister in just a couple of days? I'm sure there's a reason, but he's just very, I guess, quick thinking, perhaps? I don't know. Rob was such a great character to add into the franchise, and it tied in with Sandra, who was killed uh, in the bed and impaled with an arrow in part two. And so I think it was a, a great callback and ties into you know, that film. And when you watch those two films back to back, you realize how how angry Rob is and what his, he actually has a purpose. It's sort of similar what they did with Friday the 13th, uh, the remake, but here the sister's already dead. He's just out for revenge. And I just think it is done a little bit better than the remake. And I must say, Crispin Glover can dance. Out of all the characters in the film, I think Crispin Glover is by far the most fun to watch. I'm just so constantly entertained by Crispin Glover's uh, uh, just attempt to get laid. Like that's a whole story within this film. And that's why, because there are so many different things going on and they're all balanced very well. I just, I just thought the writing was just so strong uh, in this film, especially in comparison to the other movies for sure. And it's one of the rare times that I did, I remember not wanting the characters to die, which is something that, you should do. If you want people to care about your protagonists, you have to make them enjoyable to watch. And then, you know, we'll be sad when they're gone. It's that simple. And you can even watch this film in isolation and you will be totally caught up because they recap everything for you at the beginning. And overall, it is a, by far the best in the franchise, in my personal opinion. I enjoyed it very much. Let me know what you guys thought in the comment section down below. Do you agree with my ranking? Do you disagree? What are your thoughts on the Friday the 13th franchise? Let me know in the comment section down below. Happy Friday the 13th, everybody. Take care, be well. If you want to see more things like that, let me know. And uh, have a great day, everybody. Well, thanks to the lame-ass security, I'm going home. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have some oozing to do.